The implementation of urban redevelopment projects in Detroit reveals the economic significance of urban renewal nationally because Detroit has made massive leaps in the right direction and rebounding from what took place only 13 years ago. In this short film, we will document the details of District Detroit plan in Detroit in order to shed light on how Detroit has been able to successfully redevelop this area of the city without leaving its current re residents behind. This little-known history of urban planning is relevant today because this plan is an example of a successful way of removing blight but still not allowing for gentrification. The District Detroit plan really kicked off in late 2012, on December 4th, when Illich Holdings announced a massive new entertainment center in Detroit. The news release highlighted that the district was to be another substantial investment in the development of a new residential, retail, office, and entertainment district in downtown Detroit. On June 19, 2013, the Downtown Development Authority announced the location for the district. They announced that the plan would take place in the heart of Detroit and would be full of mixed-use developments, including theaters, professional sports venues, restaurants, bars, and other office and retail spaces. Prior to the announcement and groundbreaking of this plan, this area had lacked both development and investment over the past decade due to the economic downfall that took place in Detroit. And as you'll see in the rest of this video, some of these projects were the first developments that had taken place of their kind in over 10 years, with one being the largest office space and the other being the largest residential space. On July 24th, 2013, Michigan Strategic Fund approved the Downtown Development Authority Fund. This fund would grant $650 million to go towards the District Detroit plan. On July 20th, 2014, Chris Illich unveils renderings of the new district, officially releasing the name District Detroit, which includes the Wildcat Corner and refurbishing the neighborhood near the Lions and Tigers' respective stadiums. On December 10th, 2014, Little Caesars announces that their headquarters will also be moving into the district. On June 15th, 2017, they also announced that nearly 2,000 people had been hired at the Little Caesars Arena, with nearly 60% of them being Detroit residents. And on June 20th, 2017, the Detroit City Council approved for the Pistons to move into the Little Caesars Arena with public funding to support the relocation. This will be the first time that the Detroit Pistons had played in downtown Detroit after previously playing in Auburn Hills. The Mike Illich School of Business is another large development that came with District Detroit. The development was made possible by the generous $40 million donation from Mike and Marion Illich. The school, which opened on August 21, 2018, has brought over 4,200 students back into the heart of Detroit and has led to a graduate MBA enrollment increase of 66% and a total school enrollment increase of 33%. 2715 Woodward Avenue is another addition of a mixed-use development. It is almost five stories of luxury office and retail space, accommodating for over 127,000 square feet. It is located between the new Little Caesars Arena and the Mike Illich School of Business, which were both also additions within the District Detroit plan. Warner, Norcross, and Judd LLP were the first to move into this building and adding over 60 attorneys. This is their first Detroit address, although they've been serving the area for over, over 25 years. Another big development in the district has been 111 Henry Street. This former residential building is now a luxurious new space, costing around $20 million and offering residential, parking services, almost 50,000 square feet of offices, and 7,000 square feet of retail. This was a monumental part of the district as is Detroit's largest residential development in over 20 years. Right down the street, 120 Henry Street has also been a major development. With a $48 million investment, this building will offer more residential space, along with 100,000 square feet of offices and another 20,000 square feet of retail. With these two buildings being on the same block, a formerly low activity area has been revived and is now a true destination for all in the district and a city as a whole. 2110 Park Avenue has significant meaning to the city. The Kramer Design Group has taken that into mind, and the $25 million renovation will include almost 50,000 square feet of offices and 10,000 square feet of retail.
A final plan development is going to be 1922 Cass Avenue. This building will be redesigned with over 60,000 square feet of offices and 8,000 square feet of retail. This building is another example of how a historical site has been revitalized, as it was once a carriage and wagon shop back in the day and will now be a $23 million redevelopment. Another significant point of this location is that it sits directly across from the Grand Army of the Republic building. Detroit has made massive leaps in progress throughout the last few years with the additions of Little Caesars Arena, the Mike Illich School of Business, 2715 Woodward Avenue, 111 and 120 Hedward Street, 2110 Park Avenue, which is Detroit City Women's Club, 1922 Cass Avenue, Little Caesars World Headquarters, and Columbia Street, and will continue to do so with the additional developments of the restoration of the former Eddystone Hotel and many developments in the surrounding community. These additions have added a daytime population to the Detroit area, which was typically not as prevalent, as well as making this area a safer place with the 18 million dollar donation for added streetscape construction taking place to clean up sidewalks and add more beautification and street lighting.
The main attraction of the district has been Little Caesars Arena, home to the historical Detroit Red Wings, Detroit Pistons, and hundreds of other sporting events and concerts each year. This arena allowed for all four Detroit sporting teams to be located within a few blocks of each other after bringing the Pistons back home downtown after a brief 40-year period in the surrounding suburb. On June 15, 2017, it was announced that nearly 2,000 people were hired at Little Caesars Arena, with nearly 60% being local Detroit residents. This arena has already seen thousands of fans drawing reputable attention to the city in ways such as NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman announcing that Detroit has amazing potential to soon host the NHL Hockey All-Star Game. Little Caesars brings more to the community than just the naming rights for the arena. Of course, we have mentioned the thousands of jobs that have been added to Detroit through the arena and through the Little Caesars headquarters move, but Little Caesars also contributes a lot of outreach for Detroit. Little Caesars has donated over 1 million pizzas during the COVID-19 pandemic, and although this spanned throughout all 50 states, this shows their commitment to the community. The Illich family also have many charities that have proven their desire to help the underserved people. Their charities have helped over 350 veterans become business owners and have given over $220 million in grants since 2020 to help the community through economic development. We have previously mentioned some of the business ramifications, but there are many more for us to touch. The main face of the redevelopment has been the Illich family, proud owner of Little Caesars Pizza, thus naming of the Little Caesars Arena, Detroit Red Wings, and Detroit Tigers. Up to date, the Illich organization is responsible for almost $1.5 billion in developing the several offices, retail locations, and other businesses in the district. To go along with this massive investment, it is reported that over 200 other entities have almost put in $3 billion in outsized investments towards downtown. In 2019, Google added the second office in Detroit, and this would be located at Little Caesars Arena. Although they did not announce how much this would add in terms of employment, this does add another 100,000 square footage of office space, which in turn likely leads to a mass increase of employment. According to the District Detroit website, over $600 million has been given in contracts, with about 64% of those contracts being awarded to Detroit businesses. District Detroit has also revitalized Columbia Street into a hip spot to spend your nights or days. Boasting cafes, restaurants, art galleries, and many other shops, the street embraces the feel of a small downtown main street, while igniting a spark at night through being home to the Fox Theater in Fillmore. The street also hosts many events for the community. Finally, due to the district's close proximity to its respective amenities in Detroit, such as the Detroit Tigers, Red Wings, Fox Theater, and others, the 313 Present software was able to launch. This software allows for collaborative tickets between Olympia Entertainment and Amenities, allowing for tickets for all their amenities to be located on one convenient software. This software, along with Google's investments in Columbia Street, are all prime examples about how the district has brought unity to the city and allowed for even better fan experiences through its financial and social ramifications. This plan and progress is a positive sign for urban renewal going forward. In this class, we have read and discussed many stories that focused around how urban renewal has left behind the community that previously lived there and forced them out in the name of blight removal. But the District Detroit plan has shown how to greatly improve a community while also doing it for the current residents. Through making sure to hire Detroit residents for the construction as well as within the buildings, through renovating buildings that are created for the underserved community, through donations for education, and through community outreach programs, District Detroit has shown how to be an urban renewal plan for the community that currently exists.